Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue in our study of the book of Romans. We're in chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, which reads, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. That's Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. Today we conclude our study of Romans chapter 11, which is the third part of three chapters where the Apostle Paul is establishing the sovereignty of God by using the nation Israel as an object lesson. In Romans chapter 9, the emphasis is on God's past election of Israel. And the emphasis in Romans 10 is on Israel's present rejection of the gospel. And Romans 11 is on Israel's future restoration. In verse 33 of today's passage, we read, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The deep riches that the Apostle Paul highlights here is that which causes us the most difficulty in life. Yet, the more difficult the situation, the more deep we go in our walk with God. In fact, let our lives take a serious turn for the worst and we find ourselves struggling to trust God, only to discover the serious turn for the worst is His way of deepening our faith or our heart's ability to see Him. We struggle to grasp the immensity of God. We can understand what he tells us about himself, but we struggle getting beyond that. This is why the Christian life is such an adventure. We are always being surprised by God. And yes, it is scary at times, but since when have we enjoyed a boring life here on earth? He is always enriching us in ways that we don't anticipate. And the greatest part of our personal relationship with Him is that we are getting to know Him, who is the consummation of everything we have ever longed for, for all of our lives. Every desire we have finds its fulfillment in Him. The Apostle Paul writes, how unsearchable are his judgments, which means he is beyond accountability. No man can call God to account and say, you have no right to do that. We do it all the time, but we have no right to do it. For God is beyond us. He knows so much more than we do. In fact, you'll notice that in this verse, verse 33, The Apostle highlights the wisdom, knowledge, and judgments of God, which are three words to describe his depth of knowledge and the application of the knowledge, and then how all things fit together. And in the end, we'll see that all things will fit together perfectly. God is beyond us. He knows so much more than we do. As John Nelson Darby once wrote, This passage is darkness to my intellect, but light to my soul. In verse 34 of today's passage, we read, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor? We don't know the mind of God. We know some of it, but very little. But we have somehow become God's counselors. We often think that God has made a mistake in certain cases in our lives, especially when it is not going well for us. But since God operates on such a different level than we, His ways are way past ours. 
And it explains why we struggle so much. Only to discover if we just give him a little more time, (laughs) he'll make sense out of it all. I love the story of the woman caught in adultery. From her vantage point, I can only imagine how difficult it was to trust the Lord Jesus. It was obvious that she had been set up by the religious leaders. And then the religious leaders take this woman to the up-and-coming religious teacher who had recently burst on the scene. Her self-righteous accusers were ready to put her to death. So the religious leaders brought her to the Lord Jesus. He said to the accusers, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. (laughs) What a brilliant statement. Soon the woman's accusers were all gone, and no one was left with her but the Lord Jesus. How unsearchable are his judgments. His ways are so different than ours, and if we just give him a little bit more time, he will position us to see the brilliance of his ways. We do not know God deeply unless we go through the deep waters. Over and over in my life, I have discovered the firmness of God amidst the weakness in my soul. We often have great difficulty allowing people into our lives because we're afraid of what they will discover. We're afraid of what others will think of us. But as I have discovered, God already knows what is in the broken recesses of my jumbled up and messed up soul. And I am discovering that he still likes me. He likes you. I thought, he has to love me, for he is God. But he also likes me, even though he really knows who I really am. He even knows things about me that I do not know about myself. You see, as we delve deep into the caves of our souls, we discover him there. He is there speaking blessing to us. The question is this. Will I allow him to define me? In verse 35 of today's passage, we read, Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. God is self-sufficient, sovereign, and free from any obligation to anyone. He doesn't owe the Jew or the Gentile anything because of merit. God is indebted to no man because He has given to us all things through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All things. And there's nothing we could give to God that he doesn't already own or have in abundance. God is the originator of all things. All things come from him. And he is the sustainer of all things as well. Everything depends upon him. C.S. Lewis said it well when he said, To argue with God is to argue with the very power that makes it possible to argue at all. (laughs) In verse 36 of today's passage, we read, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The apostle concludes with this great outburst of praise. This makes sense when we have come to see our great God as he is. He is the end purpose of all things, and all things will find their culmination in him. He is the reason why all things exist, for he is the originator of all things. He made it all. He came up with the ideas of it all. And it's unfathomable. And the final takeaway for us is will we allow him to define us? Our existence really comes down to our daily choice to trust him or not. I am learning the more I trust him, the more I discover he is trustworthy. In addition, the closer I walk with him, the more I discover 
he knows much better than I. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.